What's up? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I've got something to show you, man. And I'm super stoked about checking it out. It's from my favorite company, Shinola. Let's unbox this bad boy and see what's inside. It's a Shinola. Shinola Detroit. The Rambler 600. Man, this thing looks racy. And that's because it is racy. Not in a hot adult way. Typical Shinola box but painted black obviously and inside we have the book and material stuffed up here and down here we have another book which I know is conceivable belief that products should be well made and built to last we stand for skill at scale the preservation of craft and the beauty of industry well that's why we like you keep up the good work uh, in this portion of the box there's going to be all of that standard stuff that you're going to get with the other watches, your card, your journey of quartz and steel uh, mini book here, your operation manual. Let's just go ahead and put that aside and take a look at this. This is an interesting picture right here. This is the Rambler 600 overlaid on a picture of Craig Breedlove and the Spirit of America jet powered car. If you don't know well who Craig Breedlove is, you can see it here that says the first man to break the four, five, and 600 mile per hour land speed records on wheels. The Rambler 600 is an icon of American results. 600 and 600 miles per hour. Uh, cool picture here. Uh, you can see the spirit of America. Big freaking car. It was really cool. What I really loved about Craig Breedlove is I didn't realize he was so proficient in breaking kind of these early records. Uh, I remember him for not breaking a record. In the 90s, kind of the early 90s, was it like 92, 94? They built a new version of the Spirit America. We don't have to get into all this, but that's the version I remember. And it was similar to this in that it was like a single jet engine car and he was trying to break the 700 mile per hour land speed record. And in fact, while he was doing that, they had some issues and then a British jet car um, actually broke that record. And, and I think the car still exists today. It's really interesting. It'd be an interesting uh, exercise to go and find out the history about the, the Spirit of America, the Shell edition, because I, th I think it got sold to Steve Fawcett, who then ended up dying in a plane crash and never uh, was able to set records with it. But it probably could be an 800 mile per hour car, and it's super cool. If you like cars and speed, you like NASCAR, GT1, Formula U, whatever. There is nothing faster than these cars. These are jets without wings and a lot of negative lift, you know, and, and they are super dangerous. Uh, people have died and gotten hurt trying to set land speed records and the Spirit of America, at least the last one, I think uh, theoretically had a top speed of 800 miles an hour. So I digress. You probably didn't come here to hear that, but uh, when you have a watch here that is dedicated to the breed love history, uh, I think I just got to shout it out because I love it as a car guy, as a Detroiter. I really like it. And this is a picture of the watch um, and the story that the Rambler celebrates calculated resolve and commitment to speed. Calculated is an interesting word. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Now, what's really cool here is the construction of this built from titanium. So this is what you will get if you buy this, a very special watch from Shinola. And here it is. And since I have no rights for it, I will do the dramatic music myself. Dun 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 Hopefully that was awesome for you. Well, let's, let's do it this way. Deployment clasp. Super solid, super precise. It, like I said about all Shinola watches, the build quality is really second to none. The materials are second to none. Sapphire crystals, um, and typically a, a heavy, solid stainless steel case and, and bracelet construction. This one is different because it's titanium. It kind of looks like stainless steel, uh, brushed or, or bead blasted, very much like from here down, kind of the stainless steel row rows, but it's not. This is all looks like, um, uh, tight. This is all titanium, and I can tell you what is dawning on me right off the bat here is that it feels light. This is not a small watch by any means. It's not a huge watch either, 44 millimeters uh, across here in, in diameter, so that's not big. But I'll tell you, this watch I think feels and looks a little bigger than it is. You know, I like, I love 44 millimeters and above. Um, 
All the Shinolas I have are 47 millimeters. Titanium construction and it feels light. If you like larger watches and you are one of the guys that say, oh, but they feel so heavy. Put a sapphire crystal and stainless steel on my wrist and they're so bulky. I know guys who say that. Um, get titanium. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. Titanium, when you first handle it, and I've, I, have, I have titanium watches, uh, it, they almost they, they almost worry you because they feel like they might be hollow because they're they're thick, they're big, and then they are they, you put it in your hand and they feel lighter um, than you expect. And it's super easy to get comfortable with titanium because it's so light and you and you just aren't kind of shifting around as much bulk and weight and mass as you are with steel. Titanium is expensive. It's tough to work with too, man. I mean, I have worked with people who are working with titanium golf clubs to titanium aerospace components. They are tough to work. I have seen drill bits and machining tools absolutely get decimated when trying to work with titanium. Titanium nitride coatings, you know, on tools, firearms, and all industrial equipment is solid. This is a beautiful watch. I, I'll get off that. But the titanium here not only looks great, it's it's hard to work with. It's it's often hard to give a, a nice finish. You can't really polish titanium, so you always have the kind of this brush finish, which looks great. The other thing that you'll notice is that this is a Rambler. And you'll recognize the Rambler case here with its kind of distinctive curve in, I call them kind of like crab claw uh, type of shape here. But... It doesn't look like any Rambler before it, in my opinion. Specifically here, this kind of custom made watch band that fits and fills the lugs on the Rambler. Give it more of that vintage, antique, early NASA program type of watch. You know, kind of like the Bulva has a, an Apollo watch. Uh, you know, it, look at the early astronauts and the watches they're wearing and this really, you know, when I look at it, it strikes me as something that you would see wrapped around the puffy arm of a NASA spacesuit. I mean, it looks great. I'm sorry about the glare here, and I'm trying to get you head-on shots without uh, getting my ugly mug in the way. But beautiful, beautiful watch. The, the even the deployment clasp has the the Shinola logo emblazoned right there on the bottom. Super comfortable. These edges right here, especially when you're machining really precise stuff they can be really sharp but you know really smooth super comfortable feels great on the wrist this is not my watch in fact right there serial number proof and the reason that this is not my watch and it's a watch that has to go back to shinola um and i can tell you because it's not running the ubiquitous 1010 is because this watch is going to be very rare at a thousand pieces it is a limited edition watch and if you want one you're gonna have to jump on it um, they are going to be expensive. You know, you're you're buying a lot of watch when you get, start stepping up to titanium. You're buying the titanium, the uh, difficulty in constructing and machining it. You're also buying uh, the Argonite 5021 movement, with the, which is a chronograph. And then you're also getting, which is a cool feature, this tachometer feature right here on this outer bezel, which is really beautiful. I don't know exactly what the composition of the bezel is, but it has uh, kind of that uh, ceramic type of... Uh, black bezel insert, you know, it's 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 cool and the tachymeter absolutely follows. I call it a tachymeter, but I know I know some people really stress the tacky part, or and some people say tachometer, but I always feel like that can be confused with tachometer, like um, you know, the tack on your dashboard. Anyway, so to each his own, you tell me what you prefer. Uh, but the tachymeter is interesting because of the notion that this is really a speed related watch and it's not just to cars but it's anything anything that you're trying to calculate speed with you can do with a tachymeter and it's really super simple it's really easy to overthink these and and i i, I you know i remember looking up how tachymeters work once and i was surprised and i was like i don't really get it but i was way overthinking it so the cool thing here is with the chronograph and the pushers up the top and the reset down at the bottom what you would do is you would use these markings on the outside, uh, one the quick catch is that it has to be more than seven seconds uh, traditionally for a tachymeter to to uh, create any value, and what your timing has to be less than a minute. So, uh, for instance, it's these numbers on the outside which get interesting. So, if I were if I knew that let's call it in this case the um, the Spirit of America was driving between two points and it was one mile, and I timed it. Tick, 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 tick. And it took him 30 seconds to cross that mile. I'd stop it. I'd say 30 seconds is 120. 
Uh, that means he's going 120 miles an hour. And you'd be like, well, where's the same miles per hour there? The, 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 the units um, are based on whatever known unit of measure you're using. So whether it's kilometers, miles, parsecs, it doesn't matter. Uh, what you're doing is you're timing the interval in between 7 and 60 seconds and then the number that the, the, the stopwatch hand, the chronograph hand gives you is how fast it's moving in relation to those units. So, you know, let's, let's do a really easy one here. You know you're going from mile marker 1 to mile marker 2. Your, your timing tick, 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 goes all the way to 60. took you 60 seconds to cover one mile. That's 60 miles an hour. Pretty simple. And so, let's say it takes you... Uh, 20 seconds right down at the four and there we have a 180 so you'd be doing 180 miles an hour or 180 units of whatever you're measuring okay so i don't want to get this into a total how-to of how to use a tech tech meter but um, the cool thing is you know when you're making a watch dedicated to the idea of speed and the brave men out there and women who are setting records and being pioneers and innovators in this space um, it's it certainly makes sense to have a tachymeter on a watch. What a good looking watch! What um, you know, it does have weight. I you know don't 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 let me confuse you that a light watch means cheap. This watch has some weight. It's obviously lighter than almost every other watch I have that's in steel with a bracelet, but it has nice density, nice presence. Um, I certainly don't feel at all like this is something that is going to uh, get beat up, anything like that. I mean, uh, titanium is so strong. It is, it, <laughs> people will talk about how much they hate working with it or trying to repair it uh, because it is so durable. If you're someone that gets a lot of abuse, maybe you, you drive fast cars or you, you work outside or you're banging things around a lot, um, and you just need something durable, go with titanium. Now, remember you have to have a few extra bucks. Uh, I really like it. The dial on this watch, black dial, black bezel. It's really cool. The numbers, the, uh, the even numbers here are, look like applied on that dial. Uh, the chronograph um, is uh, identified with that kind of giant third hand. There is a red tip on that hand, on that silver hand to match kind of the red flavor of uh, the box and the spirit of America. Date window at the five o'clock position. Just a really nice charcoal black. You know, and everything else here, all the lettering and all the numbers are white all the way around. So just a really classic watch. Um, aside from it saying Shinola in this and on here having a white lightning bolt, you know, at a glance, like I said, the limited edition Volvas, uh, some of the early Omegas. I mean, just, a classic, classic design. And in, in, in a lot of ways, Shinola's history has been built on kind of built using, uh, you know, vintage influences, antique influences to kind of build really modern and good looking timepieces. This doesn't stray from that at all, but this has all of the kind of the, the modern, tough luxury look that you like. Like I said, uh, I bought a lot of Shinolas early on. I took a break, you know, a lot of the designs were fairly similar. Um, I did, I went back in and I bought some that were new. This is kind of the first Shinola that, uh, in a, in a, in a, kind of the last year that's got me to pull my credit card out of my wallet again. I mean, this is just, it's, it's kind of different and it's just a really, really nice take. I love the Rambler. I showed you my blue one before this one, just even though it is a Rambler and it's the same size and the case uh, shape is the same, you know, with this different band and, and the different treatment up front, it just totally looks like a different watch. It's just really, really cool. The pushers to me, and you know, am I seeing things that I want to see to me look like pistons? Uh, you know, they look like the top of pistons with the connecting rods underneath. Looks like they go up and down. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm being crazy. Yes, I'm asking you gearheads. Am I being crazy? They look like pistons to me. Nice uh, um, notched edge, some crown protection right here. The the Shinola logo um, engraved and then be blasted around. Man, what a cool watch. I really dig this. Look, if you guys are looking to buy a Shinola watch, I know that there are a lot of watches, 
a lot of different designs. There's a little something for everyone. I love Shinola for that. If regardless of what kind of flavor watch you like, you can absolutely find something on the Shinola menu. But let me tell you, to buy a Shinola is not a spur of the moment on a whim type of thing. The watches, you know, do cost some money. But if I were to press you on it, if I were to encourage you to make the investment in a watch, you know, a limited edition watch like this, that's really unique with really unique materials, um, you know, I would say if you can step it up and, and pick up uh, a watch like this, I would absolutely do it. Listen, I love this watch. I don't think it's been a secret. The Shinola Rambler 600, check them out. I'll put a link below. Hopefully there are some of the 1,000 that are being produced available, but otherwise check out other Shinola watches. Peter Von Panda. Out.